I have these clamps in my garage and they hang on, on the wall, uh, but you need a metal bracket for it. So I want to hang it directly on a wall in my laundry room to hang my broom on. So what I'm going to do is demonstrate how to do a reverse engineer of this part with it that doesn't need the metal bracket. So I'll put holes in the back so we can actually hang it directly on a wall. So here I've taken it apart so it makes it easier to measure and I've taken a picture of it and I've imported it into concepts uh, so I can do some basic dimensioning here just for, as notes. So measuring this part right here, it's 18.5 millimeters. This hole, the inside, the diameter, I know it looks like the radius, but the diameter is 6.25 millimeters. And the outer diameter of that little lip is 9.25 millimeters. That size there is six millimeters. The height of this part is 65 millimeters. The inner width here is 45.5 millimeters. The inner height here is 48.25 millimeters. From the center of the hole to the center of the hole is 64 millimeters. And from the center of the hole to the top there is six millimeters. The width of this bracket is 82 millimeters. The thickness of this bracket is 26.5 millimeters. The wall thickness is 2.5 millimeters. The pin's height is 33 millimeters. The diameter of this part of the pin is six millimeters. The diameter of the head is eight millimeters. And the height of the head is about two millimeters. So the width here is uh, 29.5 millimeters. In the picture, this is curved, but when I straighten it out, it's 82.5 millimeters. When this is straightened out on the bottom part here, it's 72 millimeters. The diameter of this hole is 6.25 millimeters. And the outer diameter is about 14 millimeters. The width of this upper part is 18.5 millimeters. These little nubs on it is 1.25 millimeters wide and 0.73 millimeters tall. And this is our dimension bracket. It's not the optimal dimension way. It's really just notes to help us keep track of where we are as we're drawing this. So we export the drawing, and then we'll import it into Shaper 3D. So now we'll just kind of place it around in here. 
get it where we want it. So what I like to do is make a line that uh, is the same size as uh, the part so that I can scale the picture to be the same size as what my drawing units are in the, in the design program. So we'll set our, set our reference point here to the end of the line so when we scale that picture, um, it'll keep that point and uh, move the picture along that line. And we're just looking to make this 82 millimeters so that the line and the picture of the bracket are the same size. Let's adjust the opacity of the image to make it just a little darker, but we still want to see through it. Okay, so now if we look at this part, it's really a rectangle. It's 82 millimeters wide and 65 millimeters tall. So we'll quickly make a rectangle here. 65 millimeters tall, 82 millimeters wide. So we know the width of that up there is 18.5 millimeters, and we have it the same thing on both sides. And we'll just make a reference line here. So now we'll just kind of make what the opening looks like in that bracket. Sometimes we have to move the line away, let go, and then move it again to get it to go where we want it to go. Otherwise, it snaps to where it started from. So we move it away and then bring it back. So that's roughly the opening. The bottom part is curved, so we'll make a circle here. I like to get it pretty close. Um, we're gonna actually do it exact in a moment, but I like to get as close as I can just uh, with the circle itself. And then we select uh, those, the circle in that line, and circle in this line, and circle in the other line, and make each one tangent to each other. So we get it exactly right. And our line moved a little, so put it right back where it's supposed to be. So now we'll get rid of all the lines we don't need anymore, just so it's easier to see what we're doing. It also makes selection a lot easier in a moment. So the thickness of this part is 26.5 millimeters. So we rotate this into a 3D view, and we select the body and we type in the number we want, and that will extrude it to that size. Now we'll work on the uh, upper part of the bracket. So we're gonna do these curves and holes. Uh, that's what we're gonna do. And it's gonna look like this. Um, just throw in three circles and now we're gonna set the circles to the right size and in the right spot. So just like we did earlier, we'll select the circle and we'll select the uh, line that we want it to be tangent to and then we'll click the little tangent uh, constraint and that'll make it exactly right. But first I'm just gonna kind of move it, get it close to the right position before I do that. And tangent constraint for that line and a tangent constraint for that line and a tangent constraint for there. So that's exactly right now. Very precise. 
And now I'll put uh, our actual circles in for the holes. So those are diameters that's on the dimensioning, but we want to work in radiuses here, so we have to divide each one by two. So 3.125 for the hole. And 4.625 for that outer part. And now we need to do the same thing on the other side, so we'll just make a copy of what we did and move it over there. Get it as close as we can by hand, and then we will put in the constraints to lock it into the exact right position. So we're just doing our tangent constraints again. So now we can remove the parts we don't need. have holes and we're going to do the other part but uh, first thing I want to do is shell but before I shell this what I want to do is I need I want to round the edges so the body so the thickness um, is right if I do the shell and then I round the body it'll mess up the thickness uh, where I've curved the, the side the edges so here we're just going to select an edge and then we'll fill it in And we'll make that a two millimeters. And it wrapped all around, so that's perfect, exactly what we want. And now we will select the parts that we want to remove, and we'll shell it, so, uh, so select all of this inside here. Go up and check our drawing to see what the thickness was. It was 2.5 millimeters there, so we're going to type in 2.5 millimeters here. And there we go. And we turn our sketches back on so we can cut the holes out and add the, uh, the extra padding on there. We'll just drag this down through and it will cut the holes for us. And then we need to do the same thing on the other side. There we go. And now we're going to raise this up like it is on the actual part. And that's one millimeter tall. And we'll just round those tops. on both sides. Now the other part, it has this whole mechanism for connect, snapping into a metal, uh, metal bracket. But we don't want that. We're going to just make some holes here so we can put screws directly through there and uh, screw it directly to the wall with the uh, lag bolts or with the uh, drywall anchors. So I'm just going to put some points where I want to put my holes. And we're going to put a little extra plastic in the areas uh, where those screws will be just to make it a little stronger. So that will be the that larger circle is the extra plastic. And then these smaller circles is uh, holes for us to put our screws. And we'll clean up some of those extra lines that we don't need anymore. And we'll cut our holes. So select the insides and then just drag it right through. And 
it's a few more lines here to clean up. There we go. Now we'll select the blue part of that circle and we will raise it up a little just to give it a little extra meat uh, for the screws to hang on. We'll just chamfer it a little here. Maybe 1.5 millimeters. Looks good. And this isn't on the original part. This is a why we're making this is so we can do this specific thing right here. Let's clean up a little bit, put our sketches in there so we can hide them all. And we'll name this part the bracket. There's three parts. There's the bracket, the pins, and then, a, for lack of a better name, the friction grip. So we just finished drawing our bracket. And we'll go draw our pins next. And the pins hold that little rubber piece into this bracket. Maybe we'll just ease these edges a little bit here. All right, so we have these pins. They're 33 millimeters tall. Uh, the lower part is six millimeter diameter and then the eight millimeter diameter head. So we'll start with a three millimeter radius circle. Extrude that to 33 uh, millimeters, so the height of it now. And we go up to the top view here. Double tapping put, uh, lines the grid to the circle. And so we can make our eight millimeter diameter circle out here, which is four millimeter radius. Now we just select the inner part of the circle and the outer part of the circle so we can uh, extrude both at the same time. And it was two millimeters tall. The head of that pin is rounded, so we'll just fill it here. And that looks good. Now we can make the bottom a little rounded. To, it makes it easier to get it into the hole of the bracket when we go to put it in. And I like to just color it so it's similar to the drawing that we're referencing. I find a little bit lighter than black is makes it easier to see what's going on so we'll just back it off a little bit. And we'll put this in a folder called pen. And we can put the pen in the bracket just so we can get a pretty good feel that it's right. We did our job correctly. It fits and everything. We won't be exactly right here. We, we just want to be close. See if we can figure out which way to nudge it, get it where we want it. There we go. And maybe it's just a little bit, needs to go down a little here. That looks good. And now we need another pen for the other hole. So we'll just uh, click the little duplicate uh, button there and drag it over and go into the top view. That was definitely the easiest way to align that last time. And we'll do the same thing on this one. Okay, we have our bracket, we have two pins. 
and both pins are in the folder named pin. So now we can control that view uh, by just clicking on that folder. And we'll clean up the sketch a little. We'll drag this into the folder sketches. And that just makes it easy to hide everything. And we'll reorganize. Okay, we'll hide the pins, hide the sketches. And there we go, we have our bracket, we have our pen. Uh, last part is the uh, friction grip that we need to do. And we'll just go ahead and this part, I'm gonna make it white so it's similar to what's in the draw in the picture we took. And I also will make this one a little bit transparent so we could see through it for when we put the other parts in it. There we go. Our semi-transparent bracket with our pins in it. Pins look a little tall here. We might revisit that, but I think it's fine for now. Okay, so this is our friction grip. And so we know that uh, the holes of the grip have to align with the holes of the bracket. Um, so let's hide the pins. And let's create a sketch plane here that we're going to draw our friction grip on. And we'll just kind of put it here, uh, align it with the bracket itself. Make it a little bigger. Move it over so we have plenty of room to work. And there we go. So now the bracket is above the sketch plane. And we'll just get them a little closer together. Easier to see what's going on. Here the image is in my way a little bit, but I will work around it. We'll see it keep popping up in our way. Uh, so we're going to project the holes of the bracket onto that sketch plane. So we select project and try, try and select our hole. And our image just jumped in our way. So let's try it again. Okay, we're going to pan around here to get around the picture that's in my way or under it. All right, now we select our holes. <laughs> and select our sketch plane as the target, and then say done. And now we'll hide our, our uh, bracket. We don't need it, we just need those holes as a reference, and there's our holes that we projected. So now that'll be our reference point. We know, uh, we could see what those, that, the size of that hole is there. So we'll start building up from that. So that's 14 millimeter diameter up there, so a seven millimeter radius, we need two of them. That's reference from the center of that hole. And we can just make uh, some lines that are the right size here. We know that that is a 22.25 millimeters. I'm sorry, 22.5 millimeters. And we'll create a rectangle. Gives us a pretty good guide. Well, from the center of that line, so we know it's 80, 82.5 millimeters is the total 
width of the part. So from the center points here, we'll just do a 41.25 uh, to make our 82.25 so we know where the end of the line goes. And we'll just set these tangent. So and we'll do the same thing on the other side. We'll draw a line from that corner down to this bracket. And then we select the circle and the line and we make them tangent. Right, and some quick cleanup. Okay, then it, uh, the next part part of this, it insets from the edge, 18.5 millimeters, and I accidentally got a circle going here. So if you shake your pencil, it'll go back to a line, and then we'll make those tangent, just like we've been doing on all the other parts. Same thing, 18.5 millimeters here, and the line in the circle, and click the tangent constraint, and there we go. Getting close. Now we know that the thickness of the of the rubber is about two millimeters, so I'm just going to draw a rectangle here to the halfway point, uh, or just any arbitrary point, but it needs to be two millimeters thick from the corner, or yeah, connected to the corner and two millimeters thick, and we do the same thing in from the other side. There we go, our 2.25 millimeters thickness. And we'll do some quick cleanup here. Get rid of all these extra lines. So we'll make the extrusion easier in a moment. All right, we have just a little bit more to do. We have to inset these three millimeters, uh, the, the sides. So it's more like the original part. We don't want loop, we just want to inset a single line in this case, so there we go, three millimeters. Same thing for this other side. Inset the other way, three millimeters. And then we do the same thing on the other side. There we go. And we'll give ourselves a reference circle here. So we have something to cut from. And we need to do the same thing on the other side, our seven millimeter circle. Got a little too eager in the cleanup earlier, I think. We had that circle before, but that's okay. We just put it back. And we close this and close the other side. You can only, in Shaper 3D, you can only extrude closed shapes. So we have to make sure everything's closed. And now we'll go through and do a cl another cleanup of all the extra construction lines that we don't need anymore. And there we go. That's the outline of the rubber friction grip uh, from above. Now we can extrude this. So because we cleaned everything up, we can just click right there and it'll select the whole inner part for us. And we're gonna make it 20 millimeters. This grip has these little uh, nubs on it, and they're 1.25 by 0 0.73 millimeters, and they're a full width of the part. So we'll make one here. And then we'll move it into its position. There we go. Looks pretty good. couple different ways to do this. Uh, we could have drawn the lines on the face of it and extruded it, but this makes it easier because we need to make copies, so we just select it. We click the little copy icon there and then uh, just drag it and uh, put them where we want the. On the real part, it's every 12 millimeters. I'm doing these every 10, just easier. I 
I don't think it really matters that much. There we go. That looks roughly right. And now we're going to round all of these uh, two millimeters for these bigger circles and one millimeter for the smaller circles. For the, I'm going to print this in TPU, and I think it'll be a lot stronger if we don't have these hard corners. Um, it'll be less likely to tear, just last a long time. And these are our smaller radiuses down here. These are the one millimeter. It's going anywhere that there's a hard corner uh, and getting rid of it and make and filleting it. Our two millimeter fillets. One more here. Then we do our one millimeters down in here. Kind of hard to select those the first time, every time. If you zoom in enough, it's not too bad. And there we go. There's our friction grip. And let's take all of this and put it into a folder, and we'll name it Friction Grip. Make sure we have everything here. Okay, nothing down there, nothing up there, okay. So we just throw it in a folder. We'll rename our folder. There we go. And we can move our sketches now that we used for that um, into the sketches folder so we can hide it all. But we'll still have it if we need it. And we'll change the color of this part. So it looks a little more like what it is in our picture. Again, I lighten it a little bit, just you can see a lot. I, I feel you can see the detail a lot better if it's not quite all the way black. All right, and we move our part into position here. Oop, missed the nubs. So we'll select it from the folder and then move it again. And maybe about right there. There we go. We have our um, friction mount um, all drawn. We're ready to send it to the printer. So we'll print the pins and the bracket in PLA. Here's a, Shaper 3D has a way to project the part onto a surface as if it's real. So this is its AR view of the part. And so that's what it will look like. And here's the original part on the top and the part I made on the printer on the bottom. And here it is in action, holding the broom behind the, our laundry room door. <laughs>